In this activity, we're going to look at portraiture. We're going to look at one of Van Gogh's portraits. We're going to be focusing on the art element of line and colour. And we're looking at the levels of three and four and maybe five and six. But we'll, we're going to focus on three and four for the moment. So the first thing we want to do is actually have a really close look at the portrait. So when I look at Van Gogh's portrait and have this discussion with my students, we would look at the lines and the mark making. So starting off with the face and the beard, there's very short lines here, short lines on the beard and short lines going up the forehead. You can see longer lines in the hair and the background has got the swirlier, softer lines that go around and of course the lines in his clothing. So there's the first discussion that you would have with your students. The second discussion that you would have with your students would be about colour. So just focusing on the portrait for the moment, he has vibrant orange hair and facial hair. So you've got orange with touches of red and maybe brown. You have the skin colour, a peach maybe or a pink. You have white. Under the eyes, you've got this lovely green and a dash of blue in the eyes. And then of course, the background is all tonal blues and blues into the jacket. And then we're going to look at the portrait as a three quarter portrait and we're going to look at the process. But first I want to just talk about the equipment that we're going to use. So we're going to use craft paper, which is brown paper. And the reason why we're using craft paper is because the white and the lighter colors are going to really stand out and they will look fabulous. And it's also for me less daunting to work on the brown paper than white. Now, in your art room, every, every art room should have oil pastels already, which is perfectly fine to use. I'm gonna just take an orange oil pastel and oil pa pastels are a great step before painting. And I'm just doing a little test here. And then I'm gonna introduce two other types of oil pastels that you can use. So there's a bit of white and orange in the oil pastels. These are called smooth moves and they have a a sensation like lipstick so they're very very soft and very sensory and the colors are very vibrant and I think they're beautiful to use so the lid comes off and they just go up like this at the bottom so there's the orange and you can see very similar to the oil pastel it's a lot softer so it's because it's softer it works smoother and faster if that makes sense and I've just got a bit of a red here. And I'm going over and you can see how it blends really nicely. Beautiful. So that's the second type of oil pastel, or crayons they're called. And then we have the super mix. And the super mix is the oil pastel. And they're very, very soft, like a French oil pastel, again, with the lipsticky quality and they're a higher quality, more professional, um, something that you might want to explore with the older students. I love these, these are beautiful. And the colours again are very vibrant. These blend really, really well, they're soft. So the colours, if you look at the paper, they all look great, so you can use all the products, that's fine. The difference is the way they feel. So they all look good and it might be a bit of the application. So if you just have the oil pastels, it's not a bother and it might be something to work up to get a variety. You could even have a little basket and put a variety of um, equipment in there and the students could choose their own or mix them up. So now we're gonna get onto the process of how to do the portraits. So I'm gonna get a fresh piece of paper. The first thing we wanna do is make a large oval shape in the middle of the paper. So make sure the students aren't drawing a little circle like this. I'm going to use a white pastel, but the students will use a grey lead. I'm doing that so it's easier for you to see. So a nice large circle, egg shape, oval. Check that it's not too big or too small, which I'm pretty happy with that. Then the line goes halfway for the eyes and a line goes halfway for the centre of the face. 
that's for a frontal position but we're going to do a three-quarter position so we need to turn everything slightly when you turn everything slightly you can see full ear the nose changes everything just changes so the students need to understand that when they're doing a three-quarter view everything is going to slightly change so the line in the middle stays the line the eye line stays and what we're going to do is make a line in a curve between the middle and the side like this. So now we need to get the eyes in. So the nose, the eye stays in the center of the face. So if you actually look at the Van Gogh portrait, which you can refer back to, and the students should have a reference picture, the, his chin and his eye go right through the center. So you would actually get the students to do some measuring. So that eye is gonna be right in the center. So I know that he has a frontal eye there. My nose is going to come down, which goes halfway between the chin. The ear, which normally sits at the side if it was a frontal. Now you will see the whole ear and that comes in head goes out, the other ear disappears, and you put the other eye, which is nearly the same size, slightly smaller, and it touches the edge of the face. The next thing, I would put the nose in. So I'm just going to do a, a triangle nose for the moment, just to get the shapes in, and the lips go between there. Now I'm going to refer back to my portrait of Van Gogh and what we want to do is now look at the line that goes down the side of the face because it's not a smooth oval line, it actually has bumps and it, it, it moves. So the students can get their finger and they can follow that line and they need to have a really good look and then they need to copy that. So the forehead goes out to the eye and then from the bottom of the eye to the bottom of the nose is a wave shape which goes out and in then you're going to have the moustache coming out and then the beard and it's slightly square at the bottom of the chin which is not the chin it's actually his beard but it gives you a little square shape so I'm really looking for the lines and the shape and I'm really looking at that picture closely and I'm going to go back up that I'm following the line of the beard to the ear. If something's in the wrong spot, this is when you move it and the hair is going to come out and the hair actually sort of points up a little bit. He's got the hairline, which comes like this. It goes near the ear and then it goes up into a little sort of slight point and down. The neck comes in and there's a line of the clothes which I'm just going to leave that very gentle because I'm going to really focus on the face. So now that I have my face mapped out, what I'm going to do is choose colours. So I'm going to take the orange and then I'm going to put all the orange parts in. I'm going to take, I'm going to do the white last, the highlights last. I'm going to go orange. I'm going to use a bit of red for the darker parts. I'm going to use a skin colour. I can see the green. So I'm going to take the green that I can see and I'm also going to take a dark brown for around the eye. There's a bit of blue in there, so I might grab some blue. What I'm going to do is start with each colour and I'm going to mark make. So I'm going to start with the orange and I'm going to look for all the orange, uh, orange parts in the drawing or painting, Van Gogh's drawing, and I'm going to put those marks in. But I'm not going to colour in, I'm going to mark make, so I'm going to dash. And I'm going to try to follow the same marks that he used or how I interpret them. So I'm going to get on with the drawing and I'm going to be choosing colours, mark making and really looking at the lights, the darks and trying to do the best that I can do. So I'm going to get on with that now.
Okay, so you can see how I'm moving my pastel. I'm just mark making. And I've been thinking when I'm doing this, I'm not even looking at my drawing as a portrait or a face. I'm really looking at my reference picture and I'm really focusing on my lines. And I'm taking the pressure away from myself of drawing a portrait. So when I'm doing the hair, I'm not worried about it being here. I'm actually looking at the lines and I'm just really referring back to my drawing, not my drawing, my reference picture, and trying to get those lines right. So in the face, I'm getting those marks where the white is, then I'm mark making. And then if I think I've done too much white, I can come back and put the pastel over the top, which is the beauty of the pastel. You can go over and over again and again. It gives it that lovely painterly look. And this is really relaxing and I'm really enjoying this. So I'm getting to the nose now. So again, I'm looking for colour and shape and mark making my way down the nose. There's a little bend and I can see a darker line. So I'm going to come back and where I can see the darker line, I'm going to pop that in and I can see a darker line under there. And that's all I'm doing, looking for my darks, my lights and trying to match the colours. And the mark making part is giving it a really lovely texture or feeling. I'm just going, I can see a white line there, so I'm putting a white line there. Now I'm going up to the forehead, and there's a lot of white here. So I'm just dabbing that pastel on. Moving over to the other side and there's less white and less light so I'm looking at the yellow ochre and the peachy colour skin colour. You can see I put a little bit of the greens in. Now I'm going to go into the eyes so I can see the white around. I'll do that first. There's a sort of worried look here. There's a line there and it goes a line there, a line there. Now I'm going in with the darker pastel. Going to the other eye, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm marking out where I see the dark marks. There's a little bit of blue, a bit of blue. Put that blue in. Yeah, blue eyes, I believe. So that should be correct. Okay. And I'm going to go back over the top. The white, I can see white highlights. Hang and work down to the lips, and there is a, I think there's a little bit of green, it's very subtle. The student that finishes early they could go over the top because you could just go and go and go and that's the beauty of oil pastels it works in la it can work in layers so I could keep mark making as long as I wanted to and the more, more I put the marks on the top it would just blend a little bit more so this is finished but I could keep reworking it okay so I think I've done enough that you get the idea. You could just do the portrait. If you wanted to extend your students, you could do the whole background and the jacket or just Van Gogh's head. I actually like just his head on the craft paper, but I probably would start to work down 
the jacket a little bit. So this is a really good activity. It's great, you've got three quarter portrait, which you learn to do. You've got the color, you've got mark making, you've got line, you've got shape. So this is an excellent activity. I hope you enjoy it.